welcome to this beautiful day the Lord has so wonderfully made and has given us the great privilege to enjoy and share. Truly, it's a blessing to be alive and well and God's keeping it here one more time. I honor God, my Heavenly Father, and I thank Him for His good and perfect gift. His Son, our Savior, our Redeemer, and our Lord, Jesus the Christ. And I thank Him for the indwelling presence and power of His Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, leading us and guiding us in the way that we should go, convincing us and convicting us that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. I am honored the Elder Gregory S. Messick, pastor of this great church, Antioch, United American Free Will Baptist Church. I honor the officers, members, visitors, supporters, and friends of this great church, Antioch, United American Free Will Baptist Church. All to whom honor is due, we honor, we recognize, and receive you in this service on this, the Lord's day. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. As it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. We shall now sing our opening hymn, Draw Me Nearer. I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice, and little thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith, and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me Dead and buried. 
On the third day, he rose from the dead and declared victory over the grave, death, and hell. He has gone back to the Father to prepare a place for us in his kingdom. He will come again as he promised to judge the world and to deliver the righteous. We believe in the Holy Ghost, the Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and eternal life for all true believers. One God, one faith, and one baptism. And now let us share singing our church hymn. <clears throat> let us sing our church hymn in the name of Jesus. Let us sing our church hymn. There's a great reunion here today, and thou art a river joyful in this place. We are one in spirit. Thank you, Father God, for your protection. And now, God, as we enter into this 
service thoughtfully and prayerfully and joyfully, Father God, because you have given us the privilege to have this great place called Antioch to worship, Lord. And around this world, Father God, in the churches and the temples and the synagogues, wherever they are called upon your holy and righteous name, we thank you right now for your visitation, for the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Every family represented today, God, as they listen and learn more of you, we say thank you. And Lord, as we be mindful of the lives that we live, Father, and the words that we speak and the deeds that we do, Lord, that they be pleasing in your sight. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, stay right here with us, filling us with your love. And for these blessings, we lift our hearts in praise. Without a doubt, we will know that we have been revived, and we shall leave this place. This in Jesus' name we pray and say, Amen. Into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, come in. Well, 
Shout out to Morgan, who's in preschool, but she's looking forward to the day when she will be in big school like other boys and girls as well. So, this is the AFWBC shout out to the youth. Endeavor to persevere. Wherever you are, can you say that with me? Endeavor to persevere. And we give them a hand clap of praise right now to keep them encouraged as they shall continue to go forth in this new normal. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have a message from the Lord. Hallelujah. A message, oh my friend, for you. It is recorded in his word. Hallelujah. God said it, and I know it's true. In times like these, we need a savior. In times like these, we need an anchor. Be very sure. Be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. In times like these, we need the Bible. In times like these, oh, be not a Going nowhere fast, spinning their wheels of do nothing, 
sitting on the dock of the bay, watching the tides roll away, wasting time. Indeed, appointments set a limit on our time in this life, urging us to do something productive with that time as long as it is ours to use. Yes, we make, we change, and miss appointments of all kinds, but church, there is a very present reality that we must face, and that is our appointment with death. It is our destiny, and it cannot be ignored. And if this present reality, this new normal called coronavirus, is not a wake-up call, what will it take? We, as born-again believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, know that death has already been conquered, not by stem cell research, not by genetic engineering, not by animal parts, organs, or tissues used in humans, and Lord help us if we believe in self-injected disinfectant supposedly to stop death, to stop its imminent curse, but death has already been conquered by Jesus' sacrificial death at Calvary. His appointment with destiny, this should serve as a reminder for us not to wait until tomorrow to do what we mean to do, but learn to live our lives rather than simply passing through our lives. Kindly open your Bible with me to the New Testament book, the fourth gospel as recorded by John, chapter 12. Calling your attention to verses 23 through 26. John, New Testament, chapter 12. Calling your attention to verses 23 through 26. Time is filled with swift transitions. Not on earth a moon can stand. Build your hope on things eternal. Hold God's unchanging hand. John chapter 12. Beginning with verse 23, reading from the King James Version of the Bible, the word of our Lord reads, And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abided alone, excuse me. But if it die, it will bring forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me, and where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my Father honor. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Should there be some singing? Our subject for this Mother's Day, beautiful, bright, and wonderful Mother's Day, this also fourth Sunday after Easter, is appointment with destiny. Appointment with destiny. Throughout the course of our Christian growth and development, learning of Jesus' life and ministry, we are always taught that he always taught with practical implications for all who would hear him. Practical implications related to an individual's Excuse me, one minute. Practical implications for all who would hear him. Practical implications related to an individual's ability to understand his message. Now we ought to understand that shared with you before church that Jesus never spoke either words. He did not talk just to be talking. 
It was never about trying to impress upon anyone how much he knew. Time and time and time again, he declared that his words expressed the mind of God. Now, this idea is so clear that when we read what Jesus had to say, we are convinced that it is not he, but God speaking through him. Well, as believers of Jesus Christ, we have to believe certain things concerning him, namely his teachings, his miracles, and the salvation with his death, burial, and resurrection confer upon us. Because we have faith, because we have faith, because we have faith and believe and trust that Jesus is the Son of the living God, our moral intention must be to give our hearts to God in love and obedience and our lives to our fellow man in service. That was Jesus' appointment with destiny. You see, church, we must understand God did not create man, mankind inclusive, to die. He made God to live with him forever. You and I know that death came into the world by the sin of disobedience of Eve and Adam in the Garden of Eden. Yet, because of God's grace and mercy, what was lost through Eve and Adam's sin of disobedience was reclaimed, renewed, reconciled, restored, and resurrected through the shed blood of Jesus Christ at Calvary. That was Jesus' appointment with destiny. Now, Jesus came to show the world life as God intended it to be lived. He offered himself as a means by which the life of indifference and sin could be changed into a life of righteous conformity to God's will. Jesus came to bring to the world the gift of forgiveness and restoration to right relationship with God as it was in the beginning before the serpent. In verse 23, when Jesus said, the hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified, he was speaking of his death. You see, he had almost finished the work he came into the world to do. And he would ascend back to the Father where he was in the beginning. The hour was the appointed time that was fixed before the world was. And until that appointed hour arrived, all hell could not stop him from accomplishing his appointed purpose. His appointed purpose, focus, commitment to do his father's will. And when the hour arrived, he was betrayed with a kiss by a friend. Lord, have mercy. He was arrested. He was falsely accused. He was condemned. He was crucified. And he was buried. Now, when he referred to the corn of wheat falling to the ground, Jesus set forth yet another great spiritual truth. You see, church, Jesus had to die. His death was a divine imperative. It had to be. It was God's will. The life of the world depended upon the death of the Savior. His appointment with destiny Every person who heard Jesus teach this lesson that day understood in the natural the principle of seed time and harvest. The seed must be put into the ground. It must die, and when the heart of the seed springs into life, it will produce a head of wheat with many grains, many from one. We must be content to allow the seed to fall into the ground and die if we expect to produce a harvest of wheat. We must lay our lives down, we must lay our sins down at the cross if we are to inherit 
and who have to reap eternal life. Those of us who have gotten the garden started or the effect of the seed, you understand that principle. You understand that the seed will be put into the ground, it will be nurtured, it will be covered, and in the fullness of time it shall come forth, and you will recognize it by what it truly is. Jesus' death on the cross, his shed blood, was the only way a harvest of souls could be reaped. Thank you, God, for Jesus Christ. And unless Jesus, the corn of wheat, fall into the ground and die, there would be no harvest through, but through his death, burial, and resurrection, according to the scriptures, he would bring forth much fruit. Look at it, church. Eternal life for the multitudes of the world dependent upon his death, his appointment with destiny. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might choice, life is choice driven, might be saved. Jesus knew his time was filled with swift transition and that crucifixion was impending. His focus was to prepare his disciples for the approaching hour. He was determined that every needed lesson, every needed lesson, hear me church, every needed lesson would be taught to prepare them for the work ahead beyond his appointment with destiny. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We are to understand the one desire, the top priority concerning his mission on earth was first to glorify the Father and secondly to lay down his life. Thank God for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Jesus knew exactly what he came into this world to do. Can we fully realize at whatever age what Jesus actually became and what he actually did in order that we might be saved? He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. We're taught that in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 5. Jesus paid it all. Signed, sealed, delivered at Calvary. We are taught in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9, but we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Look at it, church. It was his appointment with destiny. In obedience to the will of his Father, to overcome, to conquer, to defeat, to overthrow the rulers of darkness and wickedness and upset the godless order which had prevailed upon earth since Eve and Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden. Now for many centuries, God has seen these things and tolerated them, but the hour had come that they would be tolerated no longer. Praise the name of the Lord. And having spoiled principalities and power, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Colossians 2 and 19 for your reference. What's done in the dark will come to the light. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. Great God from Zion. Thank God for the great revelation. Thank God for the appointment for this destiny. You see, when Jesus died on the cross, Satan's power was broken. On the cross, Jesus spoiled Satan's setup. For it was at that hour, Satan received his death sentence. Yes, 
He is still in the world, but he has been stripped of much of his power. Jesus, hallelujah, overcame the world, the flesh, the devil, death, hell, and the grave. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 55 to 57 asks the question and gives the imperative, the divine imperative. Oh, dead, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strip of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which given us the victory through our Lord Jesus the Christ. Through his death, thank you, Jesus. Though he, he, through his death, hallelujah, Jesus would bring the sentence of condemnation upon the world system. Hear me, church. Uh, through his death, Jesus would bring the sentence of condemnation upon the world system. Oh, yes, they are still operating. Satan is still operating, but they are defeated. Satan is a defeated foe. And in the fullness of God's time, Jesus will see to it that he is put into the pit and chained there for 1,000 years. And at the final judgment, as Revelation 20 and 10 teaches us, and the devil that deceived the thieves was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Thank God for Jesus' appointment with destiny. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for perfect obedience to your Father's perfect will. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you for restoration. Thank you, God. Thank you for redemption. Thank you, God. Thank you for renewal. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. So great a love that Jesus, God gave us his son, and Jesus gave his life for us. Now, because of the victory, hallelujah, because of the victory, Jesus has established for us. Believers are more than conquerors through him. Jesus knew what would occur after his death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. He knew that thousands would be saved when Peter preached at Pentecost. Others would believe and be saved day by day by day. Lord, have mercy. Thank you for faith to believe, Father God. Is anybody being saved by what you preach? Is anybody being saved by what you preach? What you live, what you say, what you do? Who is the beneficiary? No, let me break it right on down. Who is the beneficiary of your faith? Who do you influence by what you believe, what you say, what you do? How you live in church? How are we living? Jesus knew the Holy Ghost would come into many hearts. And man, once controlled by the devil, would hear the gospel, receive its message, and renounce Satan. Thereby, the devil would be cast out of the individual heart. It's about a personal, individual, one-on-one -on -one relationship with God through Christ Jesus. You make your own personal choices at whatever age to accept Jesus and live, or to reject, reject him, excuse me, and die. You can play with it if you want to. Understand now, be not deceived. Don't fool yourself. I'm not just talking about the physical death, but the torment of emotional, mental, social, and spiritual death as well. Isn't any wonder church? So many people are always caught up in so much drama. If it ain't one thing, it's another. It's a ball of confusion. Hear me, church. Without the drawing power of the word of God, as the Holy Ghost applies the word, no one would ever come to Jesus. It is impossible for any person to be saved without first hearing the word, capital W-O-R-D. Even while Jesus hung on the cross, his word began to draw the souls of men. All along, Jesus had taught his disciples to pray for his enemies. And now, Lord, have mercy. Hanging suspended between heaven and earth on Calvary's cross, he is practicing what he taught. Father, forgive them. For they 
they know not what they do. He was practicing what he taught up to his last breath. How many times have you heard this story, church? Do you yet believe? Have you yet received the gift of his atoning death? Atonement, A-T, at, O-N-E, one, M-E-N-T, men, at, atonement, at, one, men, hallelujah. Two things, at their appointed destiny, with destiny, were crucified with him. One on each side of him. They both heard his words, and one of them listened with his heart. The word of Jesus brought faith to his heart, and he cried out, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus replied, Very I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Luke 23, 42 and 43 for your reference. Another individual heard the words of Jesus and was saved that day. In Mark chapter 15, Verses 37 through 39, we read, And Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. And the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And when the centurion, who stood over against him, saw that he so cried out and gave up the ghost, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. I challenge you to think about your appointment with destiny your own death. You have received this challenge in every sermon I have ever preached in your hearing, Antioch. Your appointment with destiny, your death is, will be affected by the influence of Jesus' mission, Jesus' mission in, on, and through your life. Jesus' mission, repentance and forgiveness. Repentance and forgiveness. Jesus knew exactly what he came in this world to do. The one desire, the top priority concerning his mission on earth was first of all to glorify the Father and secondly to lay his life down, to die that through his death we might, choice, life is choice driven, might have eternal life. As believers, we must glorify the Father by giving our hearts to him in love and obedience. As believers, we must give our hearts to our fellow man in service and keep our appointment with destiny in him forever. How much time and energy have you put into examining your feelings, your beliefs, your hopes and fears about the end of your life? What preparation have you made for your appointment with destiny? Have you made your way to the cross of Jesus? Are you secure in keeping your appointment with him? If so, rejoice in the eternal blessings of everlasting life. If not, Lord have mercy, come today and receive God's greatest gift. Weep with remembrance at the price of your sin, my sin, the sin of the world cost Jesus. Thank him for his sacrifice. Praise God for the spiritual healing available to you because he kept his appointment with destiny. Thank you, God, for mercy. Thank you, God, for grace. Thank you, God, for forgiveness and strength to go on in Jesus. Savior, Redeemer, Lord of all, by the presence and power of the Holy Ghost, to your glory forevermore in Jesus' name. Amen. Rock of ages, clap for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded savage flow be your sin the double cure save from wrath and make me pure while I draw this fleeting breath when my eyes shall close in death when I rise
live with us this morning, and you don't know Jesus Christ, and you don't have a personal, saving relationship with him, a saving knowledge of him, we extend the gospel invitation to salvation to you. It's easy and as simple as just confessing with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and believing in your heart that Jesus died and was buried and God raised on the third day. Confessing that you are a sinner and asking the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive you and believe that you receive that forgiveness is just as simple as that. No lightning bolts, no thunder crashes, just as simple as, Lord, I am a sinner. Lord, forgive me. Jesus, become Lord of my life. God, thank you for this great gift of mercy and love and forgiveness. It's as simple as that. We thank God for the privilege every day, all day, to come to him, to seek the Lord while he may be found, to call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the righteous and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, and he shall abundantly pardon. Have you decided to follow Jesus? Will you decide to follow Jesus by coming today and giving your life to him? I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back, no turning back, no turning back. No turning back. God is great, God is good, and God is greatly to be praised. This message today is centered on just finding out who you are, asking for strength, realizing the need for right relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. God has not given us a spirit of fear, so let us not be fearful of what is going on. He's given us a sound mind. Understand the choices that you make not only affect you, but those immediately connected to you. So be mindful. Be mindful of the things that you do. Shout out to all mothers today. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. We thank God for mothers who are with us always. And for those that we had and are no longer with us, but are with God, we thank God for the time that God gave us together. In my daily reading and meditation, I came across this saying, and I wanted to share it with all of you today. And, 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 and dedicated to, excuse me, to mothers. And the title of it is My Main Mother. And the author is Lanny Arrowsmith. And it reads, I had the meanest mother in the world. While other kids ate candy for breakfast, I had to eat cereal, eggs, and toast. When other kids had Cokes, cupcakes, and potato chips for lunch, I had a sandwich, an apple, and kelp sticks. I won't tell you what I had for dinner, but I bet you can guess. My mother had to know where I was at all times and what friends I ran around with. She even went to teachers' conferences and PTA meetings. If that wasn't enough, I had to be in bed by 9 o'clock each night. My mother even had the nerve to break the child labor laws. I had to work, wash the dishes, pick up my clothes, make my bed, and mow the lawn. There were times when I felt like I was on the chain gang. I just knew that she laid awake at night thinking of many things for me to do. By today's standards, my mother was a complete failure. Yet, I was never arrested. I studied hard, and I went to college to learn. I traveled the world because she made sacrifices for me. I was expected to go to church. There was never any excuses for not worshiping on Sunday. I am trying to raise my two boys in this manner. Hopefully, I can stand a little taller before my children, because when they call me me, I'm giving them standards to live by, a God to worship and respect for family, friends, and nation. All of, the, all of this because I had a mean mother. 
Shout out to all the mean mothers of the world. Hallelujah. Happy, happy Mother's Day. God bless and keep it is our prayer. And we thank God for you. Continue to stay tuned. Continue to study. Continue to seek the Lord while he may be found. And grow in the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And as we now prepare to leave this service, but never the presence of the Lord, we extend this benedictory blessing. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and all ways. The Lord be with all of you. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the steadfastness of Christ. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you until we shall meet again. Let us all say, Amen. Go in peace and the curse will not do the same. Until next time, God bless. Amen.